Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Gilman is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and you'll notice something a little bit different about me today. I am wearing eclipse glasses. That's right, these are made to view a solar eclipse, because... As you may have heard, here in the United States today, we are actually having a total solar eclipse. And as you might have guessed, that's the inspiration for this video. I want to talk about five old cards that have now been eclipsed by five new cards from Knights of the Frozen Throne. So if I could finally take these off and actually now see, because apparently these are very, very dark. Who knew exactly how these worked? What I'd like to do is talk about essentially these cards that have now uh, become obsolete, they've been outdated, there's power creep essentially with new cards from Frozen Throne that are so much better than these older cards or at least serve a more specific utility or fit the meta better that these older cards are seeing less and less play. So all that said, let's go ahead and jump into this list of five cards that have been eclipsed. So the first new card I think has been eclipsed is Ysera and she has been eclipsed by the new Lich King card. Of course, the Lich King had to be pretty good. He is the centerpiece of the entire expansion as the big bad villain, so it's no surprise that we got a general generic use card that's great across a variety of classes that just has a ton of raw power. And although Ysera is still a good card and can certainly still be played, and in fact is still being played a little bit, in certain priest decks in particular trying to resurrect her. The Lich King is still right there alongside her, but the Lich King is getting a lot more general use than Ysera has been of late. So the reason for that being, essentially, is that first off, the Death Knight cards he provides you are mostly much better than Ysera's cards. So you're getting a lot more value back each time he creates you a card. He's also a taunt minion, which means he's not quite as slow to play on the board. Sometimes when you play Ysera, your opponent could just ignore it and basically kill you because it takes a long time to get value out of Ysera. The Lich King at least forces some action through him. Not to mention, of course, that he also just has a higher attack value, so he's more pressuring and makes better trades himself. Uh, it's also worth noting, actually, that at 8 mana, it's a lot big of a distinction because you can also fit in a hero power or other strong 2 mana cards alongside the Lich King. Whereas with Ysera, sometimes you're just stuck floating a mana, and that feels pretty bad because she ends up being a 10 mana card a vast majority of the time. So basically, across the board, the Lich King does pretty much everything Ysera is trying to do, often just better. So outside of dragon decks trying to get dragon synergies, or just super control decks stuffing both of these cards inside of them, or maybe as a counter specifically to a really priest-dominant meta. It looks like Ysera is falling off, and the Lich King continues to pick up steam. It is one of the most played cards in the Frozen Throne meta so far, so it looks like the Lich King is, in fact, the new king in town. Up next is another card that should come as no surprise. This is Ultimate Infestation. Uh, this is basically everywhere on the ladder, much like the Lich King, but that's just because there are druids everywhere on the ladder, and this card is a fantastic resource for swinging the game, you know, developing a body, doing damage, drawing a ton of cards. This does absolutely everything in a single card, and unlike most 10-cost spells, which are too slow to run, Druid just has so much ramp and innervate and all kinds of tools to get this thing out faster that essentially it's not really a 10-cost card at all. They usually play it much earlier than that, and they can do so without much punishment because they're refilling their hand so quickly. There was a card like that in the past for Druid, Ancient of Lore, the card that has been eclipsed here, obviously, uh, which by these standards just looks really, really, really bad. Now, of course, Ancient Lore has been nerfed. It used to draw you two cards from its choose one effect. It now only draws you a single card. Even when it drew two cards, this was like a one of in every Druid list, it's nothing compared to Ultimate Infestation, which also summons you a 5-5 body, but draws you five cards. It also does an instant five damage, and it still gives you five health, much like Ancient Floor. You don't have to choose one. It actually just does it all for only three mana more, which is just an absurd value explosion for how much junk you get for a single card. And like I said, the cost here is not really that big of a concern, just because Druid can cheat it out. So uh, Ancient of Lore looks absolutely, completely, just unbelievably useless compared to the new Ultimate Infestation. Clearly a card which has been eclipsed and will be forgotten as long as Ultimate Infestation is around. There's absolutely zero reason to run Ancient of Lore. So up next is Don Honcho, another card which has been eclipsed by a new Frozen Throne card. And that card, of course, is Bone Mare. Uh, you know, for a common neutral late game minion, very rarely do we see those 
find success in the meta in general, but Bone Mare has done exactly that, showing up across a variety of decks. And as soon as you look at these two cards, it's pretty obvious to see why Bone Mare is so much better than Don Honcho, a card which basically never ever saw play, even in hand buff decks. It was just so slow, giving yourself a 5-6 minion and plus 5 plus 5 that has to come down way later, presumably, and still doesn't have an instant impact on the board, never worked. But Bone Mare basically fixes all the problems with Don Honcho because it's the, almost the same size body, right? You get a 5-5 five, five instead of a 5-6. And although the buff is slightly smaller as a plus four, plus four, the buff is instant on the board. So you get to buff something that's already out there, that gets to attack immediately, presumably. And you give it taunt, too. So even if you don't get to attack with it right away, as long as you can play this with any other small minion, it's still a fairly quick play because you're forcing your opponent to trade into that taunt or resolve that taunt before they kill you. So it has some both offensive utility and defensive utility. Now, it's not true that Bone Mare is strictly better than Don Honcho. There are, of course, some instances where you'd rather have a hand buff, for instance, with like Doppelgangster or even Serenite Chain Gang cards that copy buffs. Don Honcho could theoretically be better in those environments, but it just turns out that we've learned through you know, experimentation, through experience, that Don Honcho doesn't enable those cards very well, is still far too slow and unreliable because its effect is random. While on the other hand, Bone Mare is completely targeted much more controlled, far more reliable, and instant on the board, making it basically 10 times better than Don Honcho ever dreamed of being, despite the fact that one is merely a common card and the other is a legendary that was supposed to be the centerpiece of an entire expansion, or at least three classes of an entire expansion. So that's a little bit sad to see. Uh, I guess Blizzard learned their lessons with Bone Mary because it has clearly eclipsed Don Honcho. And this next example is just incredibly simple to see. Drain Life and Drain Soul... Even Blizzard wanted to make it obvious that this is just strict, straight-up power creep. They have the same name, almost. It's just obviously a reference to one another. But Drain Soul, although on the surface it does the exact same thing as Drain Life, is simply a mana cheaper. It's just way, way better than Drain Life. Not to mention that thanks to Drain Soul's interaction with spell damage and the fact that Lifesteal is tied into the damage you do, it can actually heal you more than Drain Life could ever do. Drain Life had a cap of 2 health maximum. Didn't matter if you dealt 7 damage with Malagos, you're still only healing for 2. With Drain Soul, you could theoretically heal for 7. Now, I don't think that's a huge application, maybe with Tainted Soul, that has some relevance from time to time. But outside of that, it's still just a mana cheaper for the exact same card, practically <laughs> with the same name. I'm surprised they didn't give the artwork even more reflection on Drain Life. That might have just been too confusing for people, because quite obviously Drain Life has very much been eclipsed by Drain Soul, and will continue to be eclipsed until Drain Soul rotates out of standard format. And then finally, one last card that's been eclipsed. It is the old Shadow Form, which got the mega upgrade with Shadow Reaper Anduin. Essentially, Shadow Form was just way too slow to use. It cost three mana to change your hero power, and then of course you had to use two mana to utilize that hero power every turn forward. So there's never really been a priest deck that successfully used Shadow Form. There's been a lot that have tried that have been okay, but no top tier priest decks ever made Shadow Form work. It's just too difficult and too awkward. But now comes Shadow Reaper Anduin and Knights of the Frozen Throne, and you get Shadow Form, basically a deal 2 damage hero power, but first off it's attached to this fantastic card that has a great battle cry, destroying all minions with 5 or more attack, so it's like multiple Shadow or Deaths. Then you get a Shadow Form, but it's not just a Shadow Form, right, because it's a Shadow Form that's refreshed every single time you play a card, which is just a super duper Shadow Form. And then when you combine it with Raza and his free hero power effect, it becomes even more absurd, making Highlander Priest or Singleton Priest or Reno Priest, whatever you want to call it, one of the most prominent decks in Knights of the Frozen Throne so far. So you, you can't ever imagine a reason to run Shadow Form as long as Shadow Reaper Anduin is available. And in fact, Shadow Form becomes an unplayable card once you've played Shadow Reaper Anduin if you were to summon it off of Lyra for instance, because then it replaces your hero power with a strictly inferior one, which really quite nicely summarizes just how much Shadow Form has been eclipsed as a valuable card. And there you go, guys. That does it for my list. I'm sure some people out there think I left some cards off the list. I'm sure some of you think I got some cards all wrong. I'm sure some of you think these cards aren't eclipsed at all, Then you'll explain exactly why. Well, all I have to say to that is, too bad. 
just deal with it. And until next time, game on.